What is up all you worship peoples? Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Nate Meist and I love equipping worship leaders with helpful and encouraging content. And in this video, we're gonna be learning how to play on an acoustic guitar, Send Me by River Valley Worship off of their album, Faith in Our Time. Um, at the end, we'll also bring this song into my most rigorous grading system and see how it does in a congregational and worship team setting. So stick around for that, but let's get into it. channel thanks so much for hanging out with me if these videos are helping you which is the goal um, why don't you give them a like and maybe even ring that notification bell and subscribe so that you don't miss future worship tutorials all right there are three things we're gonna be looking at in this video to help you learn this song on an acoustic guitar uh, number one is key and capo placement uh, we're gonna be looking at what key the song was recorded in what key I'm doing it in and how to use your capo to play in some other keys uh, number two, we're going to be looking at two strumming patterns to get you through this entire song. And number three, the chords. Um, I'm going to play through each section of this song, and as I do, I will have these handy little chord diagrams in the upper right-hand corner um, so that you can see exactly my finger placement and the shape of the chord that I'm playing for every single part. Don't forget that this video is segmented, so you can skip ahead to any part of this song that you want to learn. All right, so key and capo placement. Uh, the funny thing is we actually won't be using a capo in this tutorial at all because I'm going to be uh, playing in the originally recorded key, which is the key of C. So I'm just gonna be playing in what's called the C position. So when you're in standard tuning um, and you play, in, uh, play an open C chord, you're playing in the C position essentially. Uh, but I'm not going to be using a capo, so we're just going to be playing those C position chords, uh, but also in the key of C. So uh, it's pretty convenient because um, I'll be playing in the same key as the recording, uh, so that makes it easy for you guys to follow along if you're listening to this song on Spotify. Um, the thing that's not so convenient about it is if you want to lower the key uh, that you're playing the song in, because there's really not much else other place to go <laughs> uh, downward wise unless you change the position that you're playing in uh, so say you wanted to lower the key you would basically get your capo out which I don't even have mine out right now there we go <laughs> and then you would play in the G position and you'd put your capo on fret number four um, and you'd play in the G position and that would put you in the key of B um, I'm not really doing the G position chords in this video, unfortunately, um, but that's the direction that you would head in if you wanted to lower the key for yourself. Um, so I'm going to take the capo off. We'll be playing in, again, the C position. If you wanted to go up, that's pretty easy to do with the capo. Um, you, fret number one will put you in the key of C sharp or D flat. Fret number two with your capo, using the C position chords, will put you in the key of D. Fret number three, D sharp or E flat, and fret number four, the key of E. So those are some keys that you can play in using the same exact positions that I'm going to show you today um, and a capo. All right, so let's take a look at these two strumming patterns that will get you through this entire song. Uh, strumming pattern number one is going to get you through pretty much the first half of the song. So uh, the intro, verse one, chorus one, verse two, chorus two, <laughs> all the way up until the bridge. Uh, so, and then the second strumming pattern is going to take you from the bridge and on. So let's look at this strumming pattern number one. So one, two, three, four. All right, let's slow that one down. So one, two, three, four, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down. And this 
is strumming pattern number two, which will again start when the bridge starts and you'll just play the strumming pattern for the rest of the song from that point on. So one, two, three, four. Let's slow that one down. So one, two, three, four, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. All right, let's learn these chords. This is the intro to the song. So one, two, three, four. All right, verse number one. One, two, three, I can hear my Savior Take up your cross and follow me. Let my heart know in sweet surrender. Lord, it's my joy to say yes to you. Say Chorus number one. So one, two, three. Send me, send me. I'll go anywhere. I'll go anywhere. Send me, send me. I'll go. For verse number two, it's the same exact chords as verse number one, but I will show you how they get into verse number two out of chorus number one, because the timing is a little tricky. So when you're singing that last line of the chorus, so, I'll go anywhere, I'll go anywhere, this is my prayer, into verse number two. The timing there is like, it's like a half measure when they before they go into verse number two. So it's like, I'll go one, two, three. I'll go anywhere. Two, three, four, one. This is my prayer. So it's like a one count before you start singing. Um, so they kind of insert. I kind of see why they did that because if they put in an entire measure there, um, it would have gotten a little awkward. Um, and uh, you might have lost a little momentum there. So uh, I kind of like that they did that, but it's a little tricky timing wise. So hopefully that helps you to break that down. All right, then for chorus number two and three, uh, because after verse number two, they repeat the chorus twice. Um, it's the same exact chords as what I already taught you for chorus number one. Uh, so just refer to those chords and play through that chorus twice for choruses two and three. All right, and then into the bridge. Uh, they play through the bridge lyrically twice. Um, I'm gonna play through it both times and, and then show you the transition back into the chorus uh, because um, this is when we switch to strumming pattern number two. Um, and then at the very end of the bridge, going back into the chorus, I do um, all down strokes to kind of build the energy there. So let's play through this bridge section. So one, two, three, hear my heart respond, a resounding yes, I will trust you all my days, until your name is heard in the darkest place, I will shine.
All right, this is chorus number four, the chorus after the bridge. Uh, they play through the normal chorus, and then they kind of vamp the all go anywhere line um, at the end of this chorus. So I'm gonna play both of those sections together uh, to show you kind of what that sounds like. We are still on strumming pattern number two now. We switched, you know, again, as you heard uh, when the bridge started. So we're still on strumming pattern number two. The second part of this uh, chorus when they start vamping the all go anywhere line, I, I'm, I basically picked up on what the choir was singing because the main vocalist is ad-libbing a lot, um, doing a lot of spontaneous stuff. Um, so I tried to kind of listen in and see exactly what the choir was singing, like what I would consider the main melody of what that tag is. Um, and I just used that. So hopefully it makes sense to you. So let's play through this chorus number four. So one, two, three, send me. And then after that, they go into the ending of the song, the band kind of dies out, and uh, the lead singer starts kind of, you know, doing some more spontaneous stuff as they bring the song to a close. Uh, behind what he is kind of uh, ad-libbing and spontaneously singing there, um, it's basically just the F and the G chord. So, um, three, four. They just have these two chords going back and forth. And then they finally end on the F. When that section actually ends, they end on the F, so. All right, so those are all the chords for this song, guys. So now that we know how to play the song, let us bring this song into my rigorous grading system. <laughs> it's not really that rigorous. Uh, but this song could potentially receive up to three check marks, so let's see how it does. The first check mark is to see whether the song would sound good not only in a full band context, which sounds incredible, but could it also be played on just one instrument? And I'm gonna say yes. Uh, this song, uh, it starts with an acoustic guitar, first of all. The first verse and, you know, uh, the, basically the first chorus, you can hear prominently the acoustic guitar coming through and it sounds amazing. Um, so I think that you could just keep that vibe going definitely using some dynamics and strumming patterns and all that to make it sound interesting, but I think that it could sound great on just an acoustic guitar. I think that it could also sound good on a piano. I think if you just had like a solid piano player, if you were playing piano or if you were accompanied by a piano player, um, I think that that could sound pretty rad too. So yes, it gets that check mark for me. Uh, check mark number two, would this song be easy for you and like a worship team to learn quickly and pump it out on a Sunday morning? Um, I'm gonna say yes. I think this this song is fairly easy to learn. There's nothing too complex about it in terms of chords and all that. There are some, you know, stops and builds and breaks and, and all that stuff that you have to get down normally in, in any worship song, you know, but I think it's pretty straightforward. The chorus is really simple. Um, and yeah, I think that this would be a pretty easy one for, for any, any variety of skill sets to kind of pick up and learn. So um, yes, it gets that second check mark. And check mark number three, would this song be congregational? Um, absolutely, it would be, um, you know, pretty simple message. It's one that we all, you know, need to be convicted every once in a while to, to sing and to pray. You know, and that is to make ourselves an offering to the Lord. You know, what does he truly want to do in and through our lives? And are we really available to do that? 
you know, or do we have our own, you know, hidden secret agenda, you know, that is keeping us from doing what he's calling us to do. Um, and, you know, oftentimes we like to joke ourselves and to fool ourselves into thinking that we really are available when we're really not, you know. So it, it's such a good and simple, um, you know, convicting message, really, for us to sing you know, over our own lives. So um, definitely congregational, I would say. So that is Set Me by River Valley Worship, guys. We learned how to play this song. We went through all the chords. We learned about key and capo placement. Uh, we talked about how this song would fit in a congregational setting. So I hope this video helps you to evaluate whether you're gonna do the song or if you are already doing it, to learn the song. And if you're doing this song, comment down below. Let me know um, how it's going. I'd love to hear from you. And wherever you guys are, I hope the Lord is blessing the work of your hands. And uh, just, he, I know that he's with you in, in whatever you're doing, ministry work or worship leading, and uh, whatever you're doing, as always, I hope you're getting super crazy. I will see you guys in the next video.